Gostaria de saudar a igreja, aqueles que nos. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to greet the church and those who are watching us online with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite the ones who can't to stand up. We're going to be reading for our meditation tonight the book of Songs of Solomon. Chapter 5. The reading is a little bit extensive, but it's necessary so that we understand God's objective, what He wants to speak to us tonight. Revelations, uh, Songs of Solomon, chapter 5, so Songs of Solomon, chapter 5, amen. It's here in the projection where the Lord tells us the following. Coming out of a, a very strong uh, code, the word the Lord tells us the following. I have come to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honey come with my honey, have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat of friend, O oh friends, drink, yes, drink deeply, O oh beloved ones. I slept, but my heart is awake. It is the voice of my beloved. He knocked, he knocked saying, open for me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. For my head is covered with dew, my locks with the drops of the night. I have taken off my rope. How can I put it on again? I have washed my feet. How can I defy them? My beloved put his hand by the latch of the door, and my heart yearned for him. I arose to open my for my beloved, my, and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh on the hands of the lock. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had turned away and was gone. My heart leaped up with when he spoke. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. The watchmen who went about the city found me, they struck me, they wounded me. The keepers of the walls took my veil away from, from me. Lord God, here's your word. We ask that you may apply the revelation, what is prophetic to our hearts. Do not allow, Lord, the man may surpass the objective of the Lord for our lives tonight, and that your voice may be speaking to our hearts. We pray to you, asking for your grace and understanding of your word. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. I, the youth is going to help me a little bit today, because this message was the result of, was the fruit of a A contribution that the youth, we, the youth, <laughs> we may, we assemble to send to help the, on Sunday schools, send to the presbytery to help on the Sunday school. And the Lord has placed in my heart to meditate on this text. And the appropriate mo moment, the Lord told me that's the moment. And with regards to what we have being taught during the Sunday school and what the Holy Spirit has revealed to us. This message came up. The youth, they helped with a little bit of contributions on the message and we developed this and I hope that I'll be able to relate to the brethren what it is interesting to us, which is the prophetic. We're going to make here a parallel between the book of Song of Solomon, this passage, it's a beautiful passage, it's poetry about uh, where Solomon is, is speaking, he wants to 
he wants to declare that he wants to be with the bride. And he, we read, we, we just read part of the chapter. Now we are going to make a parallel of this chapter with the fourth trumpet, right? Because that's the instruction of the Lord for us until the 24th of the month that we only spoke about the same topic of what the Lord wants to teach us this month. That's in the same way that we learned a lot in the book of Nehemiah. I believe that the ones who participate on Sunday school, I believe everyone here, we have a high degree on the book of Nehemiah. Uh, the history of Nehemiah as well as the prophetic. But now the Lord is bringing us to understand a little better the moment of the time called soon, the, the period of the night that precedes the glorious return of the Lord Jesus. So now we are on the trumpets. Where we are really we already know everything about that there is to know about the trumpet. We had a, a, a seminar for the children and the teachers for the children led by the Lord, they taught not only the children but also the adults everything that there is to know about the topic. And the Lord has brought us this teaching. And we know that the first trumpet has already sounded. There is no news to anyone. I don't think that there are any visitor here that may not have understood this. So we know the first trumpet has sounded, right? It touched uh, the greenery, the trees. We have seen the signs being fulfilled. They have not stopped in Amazon, California. We have seen many events happening. The greenery is no longer the same. Now the second trumpet has already sounded. What was the second trumpet? Trumpet? What was the result? I I already said that we the 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 life in on the seas, everything that had life in the sea. Uh, uh, more than thirty percent of the fish are already gone extinct. We're going through a, actually towards a catastrophe and we're not happy with this, but this is part of the project of the Lord. And now the third trumpet also had, has already sounded, which speaks of what? Of the rivers, of the fresh water. We have seen that we have now very little access to fresh water available to the world. It's everywhere. No? Now we are awaiting the fourth trumpet. The fourth trumpet will sound. And when it sounds, the church will go up. We are on this part that is in Revelations. Revelations 8, if I'm not mistaken. When the fourth angel sent the, the, the top of the third part of the sun, the third part of the of fourth, third part of the moon and the stars would be touched and the third part of the day would not shine as well as the night then looked and saw an angel in the middle of the sky saying how great are you whoa 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 and the ones who inhabit upon, over the land because of because of the other trumpets there are still about to be sound uh, blown. So we already have understood that the first three trumpets, they touch on nature. The fourth trumpet, fourth, you know, the sound of the first trumpet, we know that the Lord Jesus will take us in the rapture and then the big the tribulation is going to start. It will be for the ones who are left behind, the ones who that are not gone with the church. Amen. So the judgment comes up comes down upon men. So let's go back to to the book of Solomon. There we're going to speak about the return of the Lord Jesus. We know that the Lord created the world, right? Seven days. 
The prophets came. They spoke about Jesus. Jesus comes. He fulfills the prophecy. He dies and then resurrects. And when he resurrected, a new covenant was established, a new alliance. And when he went back to heaven, he said that he would return. Right? I had come to my garden. My sister, my spouse. Jesus came to this world for the church, right? For men. To rescue men. To forgive men of their crimes and of their sins. And Jesus has already come to the garden. He died on the cross to save us. And I had gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my milk, my wine with my milk. So now we speak about the new covenant. When we take part of the supper of the Lord here, what are we proclaiming? The new covenant. The death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. That's why he said, eat. Eat of the bread. Drink of the wine. Enjoy this new alliance, this new covenant that I have done with all of you. Glorify the name of the Lord because the victory has been decreed on the cross of Calvary. So now drink and eat abundantly. We at the church have seen this taking place. We have seen the oppression of the Lord in our lives. We have seen the hand of the Lord upon us. Eat and drink abundantly. So then Jesus comes. He pays the price. Eat, eat of honey and drink of wine. Myrrh also speaks about suffering. It's, it's about that little plant. Was the more you squeeze and crush it, more it exhale, uh, exhale uh, perfume. So Jesus was crushed for us on behalf of our lives, and He gave us a new covenant. He had fulfill the prophetic plan of the Lord. Eat and drink abundantly. That's what we have been do doing for the last 2,000 years, ever since the death of Lord Jesus. We have enjoyed of everything that the Holy Spirit has done in our midst. However, we have come into a period which is called the period of the time called soon. 2,000 years have passed. Eat and drink abundantly. 2,000 years have already passed. Now, our time has come. It is our turn. It is the church of the last time, last hour. However, this word here, we will see that this bride, I, I don't think that she's doing things right. Let's, let's go and pay attention to it. In verse 2. See what she says. She said the following. I slept, but my heart is awake. It is the voice of my beloved. He knocked, saying, Hey, the beloved wanted to be with her. He came to be with her. But she was sleeping. She was not paying attention to the knock of her beloved. So then the beloved said the following, Open for me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. He fills her bride, his bride with compliments because the Lord Jesus loves the church. The bride is the church. However, there are two churches here, the faithful church and the unfaithful church. And the Lord wants to take the faithful to be with Him, the one that will persevere to the end. But this one is it's not really doing what she's supposed to, to do. My beloved one, my perfect one, because my, my hair is filled with uh, dew from the night. This is the period that in which we are living, the period of the night that precedes the return of the Lord Jesus, which is exactly what it narrated and the poetry of uh, King Solomon about 2,000 years before Jesus came to the earth. My locks with the 
jobs of the night. The, the jobs of the night speak of, about prophetically about Jesus on the last hour. He wants to make dwelling the heart of men. He wants men to understand that if men open their the door of their heart, Jesus will live with with them eternally. So the beloved wants to enter, but she answers the following: I "Have taken off my robe. How can I put it on again? I have washed my feet." How can I defile them? Hey, wait a minute. Was she waiting for the beloved or not? Because at first she was sleeping. And then she was uh, was not even dressed up. She didn't have appropriate robes. She didn't have the shoes on. And when we study about the virgins, this brings us back very well to the situation of the, the virgins, the prophecy, uh, the parable of the, pro the virgins. You need to have your uh, your waist guarded and your lamps lit. If you have a guarded waist, you need to have you need to have your ropes. You need to have your ropes in order to uh, have your waist guarded in order for you to walk to work. So this bride had already taken out her garments. Her uh, waist was not girded, and her she had already removed her shoes. Her robes uh, girded waist and lamp lit, and the lamp lead up not only the face but also the path and if she was not wearing shoes her path was already dark so in other words at this last hour when we reach the Lord wants to speak with us he wants to say that that our garments may be white as the white world last Saturday Pastor uh, Sabado preached about the wedding there was a person that was uh, party crasher that was inside of the party and he didn't, he didn't have the appropriate garments. This is an alert from the Lord to us. They need to be washed and clean and we have to consecrate our lives to the Lord. We need to pay attention to the Lord and with our waist girded and with our lamps lit so that when the groom comes we may open the door and be ready for him. However, so then he says the following. My beloved put his hand by the latch of the door and my heart yearned for him. So the beloved calls and shouts for her and she like still not completely awakened, trying to understand what is happening. Her heart is beating hard, uh, hard. And then he, he, but he puts his hand uh, by the latch of the door, but he doesn't enter. That's interesting, right? There in Revelation, it speaks about the Church of the Last Days. What is the Church of the Last Days? Laodicea. What does the Lord speak about the Church of Laodicea? The Church of Laodicea? What does it say about the Church of Laodicea? He shouted, he spoke, but he put the hand on the latch of the door, but he didn't enter. So the Church of Laodicea is us, right? And what is the messenger the Lord is sending us. I am at the door and I knock. If somebody hears my voice and open the door, I will enter into his house and I will have supper with him and he with me. He will not force the door. He is not going to break into your door. He is going to knock. The most that he will do is just put the hand on the latch of the door. But we are the ones who need to open up, up our hearts in order for Him to enter and make dwelling in our hearts. He's not going to put pressure on us. 
Oh, Lord is gentle. He's a uh, chevalier. He respects your decision. He'll never put pressure on you. Oh, but I uh, caught a disease, and this is a curse on the Lord. But the Lord does not do it like that. God's not going to look going to bring you into God's presence by pain. But we don't believe in this, that the Lord is not going to bring us through pain or either through pain or through love. God is love. If if you brought, you you enter into present the presence of the Lord, it is because of love, not through pain. Because He loves you. And now she uh, in the book of Psalms, the bride is still sleeping. She doesn't have strength to get up and open up the door, and open the door, and to ask her, whom to say to to him to enter and to make dwelling into her heart. That's what we need to say to the Lord that we need to open up our heart and allow Jesus to enter, because that's the will of the Lord to make dwelling in our hearts and bring us into another spiritual level. But many times we are here listening every day to the message of the Lord, but our hearts are still closed. Many times we are here listening, our heart is shaking with love because sometimes the Lord speaks to us. The Lord has a blessed service. The Lord renews, but your heart is still closed to things that do not allow him to enter so that your door the heart the door of your heart is not never completely open to the Lord so then by my beloved put his hand by the latch of, of the door and he says and my heart yearned for him and then that's what happens. That's an interesting situation happened. Look what she does. I rose to open for my beloved, and she finally decided to get up and open the door. She had her heart moved, and she heard the, well, you heard the, the word of the Lord. Maybe a spiritual gift is completely speaking to her heart. Oh, Lord, you feel that the Lord is present, that he, the Lord is in this place, but your heart is still closed. But all of a sudden, she wants to open the door. And she goes, and I, I rose to open for my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh on the handles of the lock. Myrrh, once again, speaks about the sacrifice. And here, it speaks about the myrrh in the, the form of oil. It's like a perfume that would drip. And many times, we have the Bible in our hands. We have the appearance of Christians. We even have the smell of myrrh. But like one of the youth contributed, it's just outside, it's just a perfume. Perfume. When you put a perfume, people feel from, from a distance. Oh, the brother smells good, or the sister. Uh, smells good, but just on the outside, it's just perfume. It's only on the outside. That's the unfaithful church. It only has appearance. But has not been able to open the door for her beloved. But she chose to open. She went. Maybe she had an experience. Maybe we have an experience with the spiritual gift. Maybe we may have been even been used by the Lord. Or even have been behind the pulpit preaching the Lord may have delivered you spelled demons may have been already in the past a vessel on God's hand my finger with liquid myrrh on the handles of the lock but the groom was still on the other side of the door but she finally decided to open I opened for my beloved but my beloved had turned away and was gone how sad how sad it will be when the beloved of our soul, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, comes into the clouds and comes and takes his bride. And all of a sudden, in a twinkle of an eye, 
everybody has gone away, and I was left behind. And now, what now? I went to open the door, but it was too late. My beloved, tonight is a night of opening the door for the Lord. It's not tomorrow. It's not the day after tomorrow. It's not when I'm older. When I'm, I'm speaking about the youth, or when I'm, when I'm older, when I finally find a bride. It is now the Lord wants us to open our hearts now, so that we may allow the Lord to enter and do whatever He wants to do in our lives. Because that's God's objective for the church, for each one of us. He wants to save us. And when she went out, went to open the door, it was already too late. What is the point of walking for for all this time? And when the time comes for the Lord to to rapture His church, we'll be left be left behind. What what is what was worth for David Wayne and Pastor to come here and preach, and we end up being left behind. Tonight's a night for us to open up our hearts and to say. I want. I may have walked through paths that were not pleasing to the Lord, but tonight the Lord spoke to all my heart, and I want to open up. I want to. I don't want to be in the situation of this bride. I want to be with the Lord in the glory forever. And that's the situation. I sought Him. I called Him, and He didn't answer to me because it will be already too late. We, the faithful church, will already have been taken to. Be with the Lord, the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. However, there are a few more things. I went not making a parallel with the fourth trumpet. This is fourth trumpet. What is it? What about the fourth trumpet that we had just read? And the fourth trumpet sounded, and and I saw the angel, and I saw the angel flying in the middle of the sky, saying, "Woe, woe, of the ones who inhabit on the earth." Because of the other uh, three trumpets that are going to be blown, so now the groom has already left. She went to uh, open up the door to seek him, but the watchman found her, took her, took out her robes and beat her up. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Of the ones who are left behind, the judgment, the judgment for the ones who are sadly. Have not opened up their hearts completely, and allowed the Lord to live in their lives. It's a judgment, a sadness. Sadly, however, this this unfaithful church will be left, and we know that this church will be left behind. But now, chapter six of Revelation of uh, Song of Solomon. Solomon also speaks about. It speaks about a bride, another bride. And this bride has all the characteristic of a church that is going to go up to live with the Lord in eternity. On chapter six, verse ten, we have a song also that has uh, the lyrics has uh, this part of this the, this chapter. Who is she who looks forth as the morning? Fair as the moon, clear as the sun, awesome as an army with banners. I went down to the garden of nuts to see the verdure of the valley. Re and thirteen, thirteen uh, on the thirteenth said, "Return, return, O Shulamite, return, return, that we may look upon you." My beloved, who is this one that comes in the morning? Shining like the sun, who is this one? Is the church of the Lord? He's the one who is going to live with him in the in, in the eternity. And, uh, pay attention. Uh, this youth, they are they are amazing. They are able to uh, understand deep things in the Bible. Look, look at this. There, in Revelation, on the fourth trumpet. What does it say there? Look. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet. The third part of the sun was touched, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so that the third part of them may grow darker. Hey, what is this one? Who is she who looks forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun? Oh, 
In other words, when the church is raptured, the world will be in darkness because the church, beloved of the Lord, will reflect the, the light of the Spirit of the Lord upon our lives. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of this world. And we, we cannot be silenced. We need to proclaim the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because it is near. It is coming soon. And, and take His church. Who is this that comes like the bride on the morning? A clear uh, as the sun. This is the bride that is going to, to be raptured. And when the, the bride is raptured, the world will be left in darkness because the church together with the Holy Spirit will be taken away. And we, servants of the Lord, church of the Lord, will be forevermore where our Lord God in eternity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May this word enter into our hearts that we may understand one thing. The day of the Lord is coming soon. May we not be like the one from chapter 5, the unfaithful bride that is not prepared, that does not open the door for her beloved. Because when she goes to open up the door, it may be too late. That's what, not what the Lord wants. That's why we are here. So that the Lord may remind us once again that the day is coming soon. He is knocking. He is saying, I'm returning, I'm returning. May we have the, uh, follow the example of this one who is clear as the sun. And then in verse, verse 13 he says, Return, return, O Shulamite. Return, return, that we may look upon you. Is this clock right? 822, oh boy. <laughs> so I'm going to stop. So return, return, O Shulamite. Return, return, that we may look upon you. That's how, what's going to be in the world. Return, church of the Lord. I would go to the service, I would receive a wonderful blessing. I left the service always with uh, a heart uh, lighter. There is no more time. The church of the Lord has already gone to return. Me, my, my brand. May we follow the example of the faithful church, the one that is going to go up to eternity. Amen. Let us sing the song.
Louvado seja o nome do Senhor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord has shown through a vision. I'm going to speak about the gift and its completeness. There was a man in a prison. He was tied up with his hand and feet. And I noticed all of a sudden that the ceiling of the prison opened up. And when the light of the sun came through this uh, prison, it touched him and he recovered his strength and he was able to get rid of the chains on his feet and hands and he was able to open up the door of the prison. There was angel waiting on the outside and the angel told him, I'm going to help you on this on on this journey. Open up the door of your heart. Do not do like this the unfaithful church or like the world that rejected that lock lock up the door of their heart. The Lord opened up the the window of the prison and it's open and the light of the sun, the revelation came in. That's what the Lord wants to speak with you. The Lord wants to take you out of this situation. You know why? Because the angel could have simply entered and broken everything, breaking the, the shackles, but no, but you are the one who took the shackles out of your hands and feet. You are the one who opened up the door and met with the angel on the other side. And that's how the Lord is doing with us. With, so that we may make the decision to open up the door. So that the Lord may show us this new path, this new life. We have nothing to lose if we open the door of our heart. Amen. We're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord for this wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus. I want to praise the Lord. Because it's good to be in our house, Lord. It's good to feel this great love. This wonderful love. Praise the Lord. Because it's good, Lord. To hear a sweet voice speaking to our hearts. Because every time we enter into your house, Lord, You're the one to touch in our hearts, Lord. You're the one who visits us in a wonderful way. That's why I want to thank you, Lord. Because we are not deserving, Lord. But you are the one who loves us in a very special way. You're the one who has touched in our hearts. With your sweet love, Lord. That cannot be compared with the love in the world. We want to offer our gratitude and place it before our author for the deeds that you have done in, for our lives, Lord. You're a wonderful, Lord. For the security that you give us every day, Lord. We want to praise you, Lord, for your love, Lord. We have no word to express how thankful we are because you are a God of love. A God that loves us in a uh, wonderful way, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this. Each, this day has already passed because tonight we are in your house, Lord. How many difficulties rise up to, pr to hinder our uh, journey, Lord, but you give us strength, Lord. You allow us to be victorious every day and to thank you with our heart contrite and filled with joy, Lord, for the assurance of our salvation. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. We offer before our altar, Lord. O offer your life to the Lord, to God's altar, asking forgiven, forgiveness to whatever may distance us from the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The bride is the church. The groom is Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
Lord, we present before all the service of adoration to your name. Lord, the praises, the glorifications, the bread that placed before our altar, their requests, the place before our altar, their supplication, their request of forgiveness, their sins, Lord. Forgive them, Lord, not because of me, but because of the precious blood of Jesus that was shed for our lives on behalf of our transgressions. We want to praise your name, Lord, and raise your name high up, because you are a great Lord. We have nothing to complain, Lord, because you have not allowed anything to be lacking in our lives. Now we present our life once again before you, Lord. Present the service before your altar. Receive, Lord, before your altar as a sweet smell, Lord, and take us home in peace for our homes under the covering of the blood of your son Jesus we pray are really thankful in the name of Jesus the church may be seated have come to the end of yet another service of glorification of the Lord if you need a prayer we the ushers and deacons are here to pray for you and to complete everything that maybe you desire that the Lord complete in your life I'd like to remind the brethren about the Sunday school who have received a great blessing and also preparation for the great shout on the special day on the 27th. I have already shared on the group of assistance the invitation in Portuguese and English, so let us proclaim and invite because this event is exactly for evangelization to bring lives to, into the presence of the Lord. As soon as it's completed, the Lord will return to take His bride. Let us be praying and evangelizing for this event. Amen. Peace of the Lord.